zero three is when your link is not uh, got it. So now it is the streaming. Welcome again. We are on YouTube now on the ACSIR channel. So those of you who are for some reason having difficulty, Amit, uh, we are we have now streaming on ACSIR YouTube channel. Nega, can you put the link, please? Nega. Can you share the link, please? Yeah, this is the link. Ashwini, you can also share this link on the email. Yes. This is the link of ACSIR channel. And we are on channel. So those who are, for some reason, not able to attend because of bandwidth or any other technical type matter, kindly join us on YouTube link. It is open access. Of course, your friends and everybody else can also join. So let's start with the uh, Nega. You to enable screen, Nega. Uh, sir. You have to enable screen sharing. Yes, sir. And also make me co-host. Dan Professor. Dan. Okay. I'm and also, professor. also, also uh, make. Uh, uh, so I and Professor Namika, both of us will be working with you together in this course, meeting the unmet needs, inclusive development through innovations from and for grassroots. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, when you develop a solution to meet the needs of common people at the community level, then that becomes innovation for grassroots. And when we work on the ideas of the communities, of the individual innovators from the grassroots, then it becomes innovation from the grassroots. The triangle we will discuss in detail in another session, but it's just to show that our purpose is to link innovation investment enterprise. Enterprise need not be economic. It could be social, cultural, or ecological. So it is not necessary that our solutions that we develop in our labs should reach people only through market means. Surely many solutions will reach through the market means or the market channels, but there are many open source solutions or what we call a DIY solution, do it yourself solutions that will reach through open access. So we are interested in both kinds of solutions. Innovations that will go through market, innovations that will go through non-market channels. Uh, and therefore, it is very important for all of us to realize that this purpose of this course is not to undermine what CSR is already doing. In fact, we recognize and respect immensely the solutions that CSIR labs have provided for solving our country's problem. Where there is a small I can call it uh, stickiness, or maybe there's a need to make our path a little more smoother. That is about meeting the needs of common people, the disadvantaged people, poor people. There, we can do better. That's all we are saying. In many respects, for example, the Aroma Mission, some of you must be from uh, IHBT, some of you must be from CIMAP and uh, IIF. And you know that in this mission, many labs have worked together to deliver the technologies, solutions to most interior areas of Bundelkhand, in Tamil Nadu, in Kutch, in desert, mountains. You can name the region and solutions have reached. So it is not that CSR is not reaching already. In many solutions you have reached, but there remains a lot of scope of improving our ability and capacity to reach the unreached communities that we have not reached as yet. That is one challenge that we would like to address through this course. It is very important that we also realize that what you do in the normal course of your research, your projects, you can continue to do it. But this course provides you a platform and opportunity to do what we normally may not do. So let's say you are from NPL, and you have developed a new material. That material can be applied, let's say, in water filters. 
Now, in the normal course, you might use this material for industrial applications and or for high end uses. But can we find applications of such new materials for water filter? I had done a review of all the patents of CSIR on water. I'll share with that, that slide with you in a later class. And you will notice that many labs have developed one, two, four, five patents they have filed on water filter. And yet, we do not have a robust design of a water filter for meeting the need of millions of our people. So is it possible that we take different elements in which different labs have excelled and put them together to create inter-lab solutions, combined solutions, so that our people can use it as a modular technology. So if there's a high arsenic, then add this module. Or if you have high iron, in, uh, for example, in Dhima Jinya Sam, use another module. So basic material, basic structure may remain common, and additional modules can be added so that the design will reach almost every district. There are 700 odd districts of our country. And our goal is that in every district, we should be present. Our solution should be present. How will they reach there? That's what we are going to discuss in this course. So let me take it further. Uh, so what is the purpose? One of the key purposes is that we have often prioritized the research under the influence of demanding clients, those who can put pressure on us. Our guides also influence us. In other words, more proximal pressures work on us, but distant pressures sometimes don't even reach us. So idea is how do we create pressure on us, ourselves, on behalf of the communities whose problems have remained unmet for a very long time. So some of you might know that in Honeybee Network, we organize show the Akras and we walk in different parts of the country. In summer, we walk in hot places, in winter, we walk in cold places. In autumn, I walk with my students of IIM in Himalayan region. And through these walks, we witness and identify the problems which have remained unsolved, sometimes called as wicked problems. So as I was mentioning about Dimaji, I'll again come back. There, the water has high iron content. They use conventional filters. One, they will take a canister, put some pebbles and sand, ash and different things, water becomes apparently clean. We fill that water in our bottle. We walked for about maybe 50 yards, 50 meters, and the water became brown. That means there was dissolved iron, which oxidized, and then the water color changed. Now, mind you, a district which is famous <clears throat> for various reasons, uh, Ulfa was born there. And yet they don't have a good technology of DIY technology of filter, which they assemble themselves, maybe with some modules that they can buy and solve their problem. Now, obviously, if small entrepreneurs in different blocks or panchayats of Dimaji will like to make this filter, they will have to have very affordable, flexible, adaptable solutions. This is a challenge that we have to meet. If people, if the needs of people, remain unmet for a long time, you know it leads to unrest. It leads to an army. The peace then disappears and we have to then spend, you know, a lot of money. For example, in the central tribal regions, our government spends about 20,000 crores in bringing the situation under control where extremist elements, unfortunately, are using violent means. We don't want that anybody should feel the need to articulate their aspirations, their needs through violent means, they should be able to do it. Why should they be articulating? Why wouldn't we go and find out their needs? That's one of the things that we will do in this course. Try to understand as to how long should people wait for someone to reach them and identify their problem. Why wouldn't we do that as a part of our learning process? Learning process? That's very important that we do that. Uh, we also realize that while we have a lot of innovations, we also have a lot of inertia. We all know that many tribal people make liquor. When they make liquor, they distill. So they have distillation technology, but they don't have fractional distillation technology. They don't make extract as out of the herb that they have in the forest. So entire raw material, from the forest 
comes out as raw material without any value addition what we call as in situ value addition in situ means where the resource occurs we should add value there so maximum poverty exists in those regions because they are only laborers they are only collectors they don't get value for all the resources they collect because they don't add value there can we develop small machines can we develop processes by which people who know distillation instead of making liquor will make essential oils maybe some other chemicals enzymes and instead of telling selling in tons of quintal they will sell in ml 25 ml of this enzyme 3 ml 26 ml of this so that their income increases so our goal is to use the best of the scientific knowledge that we have blend it with the insight that people have the local knowledge that people have the indigenous knowledge that people have and produce solutions that are inclusive and effort you know mahua many of you must have how many of you have seen a mahua tree or a mahua seed can any one of you switch on your video and audio and tell me somebody has seen it anybody yes i have seen it virinder so how yes. do they extract the kernel out of mahua do you remember have you seen have you paid attention yes it is a tree born uh, fruit ha ah. and uh, it drops and they uh, pick up and collect uh, in a basket mm. and they bring at home mm. that's all. and uh, then they distill they eat uh, by boiling with the butter no that is for the oil but for, if they have to take the kernel out how will they take the kernel out kernel manually they do it they, with the help of ha huh? what do they take as for breaking the nut stone why by yes. stone by stone yes yes yes. Right? yes 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 the reason i am saying this is yeah 10000 years ago hmm. they must have found a way of cracking the nut by stone isn't it true even true. today even today they are using the same technology that is the inertia we will discuss that in a class separate class but i am just trying to highlight this issue that there is no reason why with csio and you know durgapur institute and yari and many other institutions we certainly can develop a good nut cracker can't we yeah can ali baji yeah can we, we can that? yes we can do it we can do it very easily uh, but the yeah. question is my my question is my i want all of you to feel internal need because if i say this it will not make difference but if you realize it from within i think we will succeed in this mission of what we are trying to do together it is a journey that we are working on together our role myself and anamika's role is to highlight some of the situations that we have learned through our research action research to our show the others and there are many things that you have observed yourself and we will try to see and blend both the processes both the knowledge systems and then see what we can do we have also realized that technologies that women use under seem to go undergo much slower change than technology that men use we will take those examples tomorrow but in the next class but just reflect on this sentence reflect make a list next time next session we will discuss this just make a small list and you will notice that indeed it is true but we didn't realize it isn't it But we must realize it why should women undergo higher amount of drudgery then why should various technologies that we develop get embedded in the processes that men use but the same technologies are not embedded in the processes that women use with the result they have much more labor much more effort to get same amount of output in the activity that they do which means that their time available for leisure for relaxation or for reading or studying or whatever else that may like to do is limited now this is not fair this is not fair this is not ethical this is not correct so we will look at some of the structural barriers maybe which caused by gender which could be caused by spatial differences 
regional differences, which may be caused by seasonal differences or by social differences. So we will look at the innovations that people still make. Despite all these constraints, there are people who come out with solutions. We will come across, we'll see some of them today itself. And find out the ways in which we can not only learn how they solve the problem or what problem they solve, but also how they solve the problem. How do they conceptualize? What are the heuristics that people use? Are those heuristics applicable in our lab? We we'll ask ourselves. So it's very important that we look at how we create inclusivity. When we talk about inclusivity, we will have to pay attention to inclusivity of not only scholars and scientists, but also our lab assistants. Last time, in the last course, I remember many examples were given by students, and I would like to have them from you in the course to start thinking about it, where you couldn't solve a problem, and a technical assistant, assistant in the lab offered to help and solve the problem because they have worked with you, students like you, for decades. They have a lot of practical experience. They may not be scientists, doesn't matter. They are Please, please, please. Mega, please keep checking the uh, Mega, please mute. Yeah. So please uh, look at this way that uh, various, we have to include the gardener. We have to talk to the gardener in our lab. We have to talk to the driver in our lab. We think they have known nothing. They may know a lot. Give you a small example. My favorite example, uh, we were in, during the COVID, we again was trying to have an Annapurna program, a food for knowledge program. So they were workers who were stuck because of the lockdown and they were not able to go home and their contractors had turned away and nobody was feeding them. So our team, Anamika and her colleagues tried to organize through voluntary contributions, food for them. But then we said, look, food is very simple to provide. Anybody can provide it. But we will provide food and you have to share your knowledge. And in one such meeting, I shared the example that I'm going to tell you, just to make them realize that their knowledge actually matters. And some of you are from uh, Intact, and some of them, some of you are from CDRI, I'm sure. Somebody maybe from CCMB. So now you will tell me the science of it, what I'm going to tell you. So once there was a whitewash going on and a worker cut his hand. I said, let me bring the ointment to put on this, to heal it. No, no, sir, I'm just coming. He went out, came back after a few minutes, and the blood had stopped. What did he do? He applied spider's web, which he had cleaned from the house for whitewashing. That spider web, he put on the wound, on the cut, and the blood coagulated. Will somebody of you tell me what is there, the spider web? You can search if you wish to, but some of you might already know. This is the best coagulant, coagulant that we have in the available knowledge, available, available technology. Can somebody explain why? Some of you? How come spiders? But what is there in the spider's web, which that silk that the spider weaves, which coagulate the blood? Anybody, please? Yes, you can unmute yourself. No, no, for blood coagulation, what is blood? Why does it get coagulated? But I mean, will not coagulate the blood, will it? No. Why does blood get coagulated? Anybody? I'm sure one of you can give me a scientific answer. Hmm? Who will answer this? Somebody? A lot of, lot of papers on this. And if you are touching, you will find it easy. Just to mute yourself. 
Because this keep checking. Let me show you. No, 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 this one, wait a minute. So this is a paper. And they have recovered the silk from three different spider species applied on the wound. And they found that they could cover, they could heal very fast. There are many other papers on this subject. Have, has any one of you thought about it? Anybody? Hello, sir. Yes. Uh, spider web has vitamin K, which is an anticoagulant. Uh, mm. It helps in the clot. It helps in the clotting process. Mm. Um, vitamin K uh, activates many uh, cough factors, which. Uh, helps in the process of clotting. Uh, like uh, prothrombin is a vitamin K dependent uh, protein. My question is if it is so effective, if it is so effective, why haven't we developed a product out of it? We can have a small spider farming, spider web farming uh, enterprise. We can harvest the web, silk of the spider, extract the protein, make the formulation, and make it available at very low cost with very high effectiveness. It could be used for defense of our soldiers, it can be used for our workers, it can be used by farmers, it can be used by industrial workers, anybody. Why don't, why didn't we do that? Why don't, what prevented us from doing it? Huh? Time is, it a, is it a potentially viable lead? Is it a viable lead or not? Does it make sense to us? I mean, I, I want your honest answer. Do you think it is worthwhile pursuing or it is not worthwhile pursuing? Sneha or Ashish? Uh, huh? uh, so, uh, I think it need freshly woven spider web to use it as an, a no. method. No, you can use any web. There are different species of spider, of course. But all of them have shown their wound healing properties. So therefore, uh, that is not the question. But the point is, the reason I'm mentioning this, Neha and others, friend, that there are areas where we could learn very deeply about knowledge system. I'm not saying that knowledge of the gospel can solve all problems. Certainly not. By definition, not. Because how can people anticipate the good science that many of you do in your lab, most of it, they were, their knowledge is empirical. Not necessarily, in most cases, they will have a theory, but they may have a practical experience. So how do we deal with this? Let us go further. Let us go further and see what all we can going to do. So this is, uh, so we are going to look at the knowledge of farmers, mechanics, various other people. We also will look at open source databases that we have developed. And we will also try to find out how can we create public goods of knowledge. I will very strongly appeal that each one of us, of course, when you share your paper on ResearchGate or academia.edu, it becomes accessible to everybody in the world. But we must ask ourselves, and this is a question I will repeatedly ask in the class, how much do we download? How much do we upload? India is one of the largest consumer of web content, you know, you download for good reason, good lot of research papers, you read a lot of blogs, apart from other things that we do on social media. And yet, how much of content we upload with the word downloads? That's a question we should ask. Is it not a fair question, Piyush, Saida? Is it a fair question or not? Yes? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is it a fair question? Or unfair? Yes, 
So my, what I suggest is yes. during the course, if you, if, you, if you don't, I mean, my my reason for asking this question is that if we want to be a leader, we want to be a leader in the world on in certain domains of knowledge, then we will only become leader when many people follow us. How will they follow us if they don't know what we're thinking about, what our ideas are? So Honeybee Network has, in that sense, created a large number of databases. We will discuss them as we go along. For example, there's a database of abundant US patent, 0.9 million abundant US patent, thanks to Devika and Zaigam, two of our former students who helped, and, uh, along with Anamika, gyan.org slash patent.php or techpedia.in slash patent. Open access, open access. Anybody can use that database. 0.9 million abundant patents. You, they're free to use. They were granted in US. PTO, Patent and Trademark Office. They were not renewed. So they're valid pieces of intellectual property. Why did we do that? Because we don't want any student of our country to do what has been done before. We also want them to build upon what has been done before. So this is a course which will help blend knowledge in the formal system and the informal system, but also help create public goods. <coughs> so of course, we recognize that creative ideas can emerge from anywhere. Anyone, anyhow. So we will have some exercises where you will talk to your attendant, you will talk to your maid servant if you have, maid assist, home assistant if you have at home, you will talk to driver, you will talk to gardener, and you will find out whether they have some insights about solving problems of biology, of physics, of, of uh, soil, of uh, moisture, of uh, water uh, storage. Think that they do every day in their life. Are there insights that we can learn from? We'll also look at the policies and processes which are required or which are already there but may need modification to make our solutions reach every district. I was telling Shekhar two days back, we were together on 11th, and I said, you know, there are so many, every district has a Kishi Vigyan Kendra set up by CSI, ICR. If all of our labs identify for which district, what solution I have, and show it at the PVK field because farmers come there twice in a year in Ravi season and Kharif season, winter season and monsoon season. Our solutions could reach effortlessly because there's an infrastructure already exists there. They have connection with the community. We just have to plug in our solutions there and they will go there. So we will look at, we will also look at how some of you can join hands with the communities and work together and share your findings with them and acknowledge them and make them co-author in your publication. We will look at all that philosophical issue. Why many times we take the knowledge but do not acknowledge that. We don't even give back to them what we did with their knowledge. So what kind of new ethics in science must we develop that will make them partner in the knowledge production and reproduction process? This is how we will do. You will identify the unmet need, as I said, of the elders, community, the in industry, entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. small entrepreneurs, uh, vendors, then see how that unmet need can be met by adding some value, scientific and technological value, and new product and services can be developed. We would also like that you convert an unmet need into a research project after reviewing prior art literature, patents, etc., market product, databases, etc. So everybody will do a project where you will look at one unmet need of society and convert that into a research project, which you may pursue yourself. I will leave it to you. But my hope is that at least that review, even if you, when you upload it, it will become available to everybody. If you don't pursue it, somebody else may pursue it. Some of your juniors may pursue Some of your friends may pursue it. Some student in another university or college may pursue within India or anywhere else in the world. But since you would have created a framework for that solution to emerge, somebody will take it and follow it. So we will also try, if possible, to look at how we develop pedagogy for IP protected solution versus open source. We plan some assignments. We will also have a final project and we will do some revision. So today's session, by that, now let me stop here. Any question you have?
before before we start for the day today uh, we are going to learn uh, before we start let me just tell you what we are going to do today we are going to learn from innovations from any sector anywhere we will also find out how do we learn from these innovations and as i said earlier we would like to listen to the lab attendants supply chain members shop floor workers people who run our machines people who repair our machines people who service our equipment talk to them learn from them and see how we become better scientists more efficient scientists let me stop here and ask you if there's any question any comment about the course and uh, there are outline has been sent to you if you have any suggestion to modify the outline we'll be very happy to incorporate if you want some topic to be added or something to be dropped something to be elaborated we are in your hands both of us will be very happy to hear from you send us a mail or put it on the chat as you feel necessary any comment so far hello sir hello go ahead anil uh, i want to say that uh, every time we cannot harness the nature that, that you have said in sp spider web farming or something like that na again can you repeat what you say i want to say that uh, every time we cannot harness the nature or cut from nature no we cannot we cannot surely so we, we have to develop our technologies and mimic the material which they are producing in our labs and then in industry that that my suggestion is anil aisa hai the yes, point, point is that you are absolutely correct that not all solutions will come directly from nature i agree with that we cannot kill each every organism whales everything are decaying their number is decreasing so we have to find their uh, what they are producing and just to mimic in our their our lab correct, for it. correct correct that's biomimicry is a very powerful form of learning also sometimes we as you know we synthesize the the uh, long chain or short chain molecules yes, after finding out their structure many of you are math people on synthetic chemistry that what you do isn't it yes, uh, or sometimes you modify one hydroxyl group or some other group in an existing yes. molecule what is called as biosimilar you can modify one particular yes, group and yes, then change the properties of the molecule so i agree all of that is a task that we have to do my only point is that uh we will treat every source of knowledge with equal respect that's all i'm saying yes uh, we have to go to nature uh, go we will not deny ourselves the opportunity yes, to learn from it is yes, possible we will learn yes, if it is not possible we will learn synthetically yes, because you must learn you must find out that most organic compound whatever we do just have some connection with carbon isn't it so we have to go to nature uh, understand what they are doing and then uh, we'll try at ourselves and correct. the things correct. that i'm i'm saying that i'm saying correct any other comment any other comment uh, hello yeah, sir yeah go ahead shivam sir Uh, sir, this is very inspiring uh, that we are Indians and uh, we know many methods by which we can treat many things at home. Uh, like in rural India, if we go, there are no medical treatment provided for all these uh, things occurring. So this was a very inspiring lecture. We can learn so many things apart from this spider web uh, going on. so and uh, since we in the last one and a half year we have been facing all those uh, things going on with corona and everything so if we go back in our past and see these lungs uh, uh, dysfunctioning was being treated by yoga pranayam and many other things so we can shakunta what is your background shakunta what is your background i have done msc in physics So now you are pursuing PhD. Yeah, with Nisker. There, actually, on policy issues of uh, physics, is that right? Yeah. Policy, science policy. So, no, I'm not. I'm not. I was not implying that we will find answers only in the past. That was not my 
in no, no, not not exactly uh, past. I mean to some, say some that... some of the solutions may come. For example, yes. my favorite example is uh, many of you have experienced or noticed in your families that when a child, newborn child, or few weeks old child or few months old child has a problem, gastric problem, mm -hmm. then the mother would apply asphatida or yes, nut in the stomach, yeah. In the, not in the navel, right? In navel, right, yeah. Is there any modern medicine which is delivered through navel root? No. Even now, I apply to my kids most but, of the time. Now the question is, as a scientist, we should ask this question. Yes. We ask this question that there is there are many drug delivery routes, isn't it? For, for a lot of work is being now done that how to overcome the blood brain barrier and they are saying that a nasal route may work for overcoming blood brain barrier. Fair yeah. enough. Similarly, navel root, one is one group uh, in the last batch had developed a project on uh, validating what kind of drugs up to what age for which kind of indications could be developed, could be delivered through navel root. You know, not just for infant, even grown-up people, if they apply as fatida, it has some reaction and helps yes. in the gas, isn't it? So yes. it is a viable, viable drug delivery route, scientific, scientific route. If it is scientific, we may need to pay attention. That's all I'm saying. Whether it yes. is contemporary or past, it doesn't matter to me as much as it matters that if it is scientifically validated, if it is possible to validate it, we should give a chance to this knowledge. Yes. Dilan, you wanted to say something? Dilan Kumar, did you want to say anything? I'm seeing your... Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much, sir, uh, for eye-opening session. Actually, I was thinking, uh, let us go back to the uh, Mahua uh, kernel seed, uh, what we yes. discussed. <laughs> Actually, we have uh, designed and developed... Uh, nice decorticators at our industries when tons of uh, seed can be decorticated efficiently and uh, with a uh, least losses but unfortunately we could not uh, design a decorticator for 2 kg 5 kg of mahua seed uh, that can be employed at a farmer house yes uh, uh, I'm uh, thinking uh, in these lines and uh, thank you very much for eye opening this thing and decorticators uh, can be designed uh, with least efforts. Uh, there is no science actually. Why can't we design it? We have you know, already few, designed in industries. Few days back, few days back, Kyan team was in Garchiroli in Maharashtra. Yeah. And we also had a show the other day. In yeah. Garchiroli, a lot of Chironji trees grow. Chironji, you know, many of you yeah, have. Yeah, I, I, yes, I know. In sweets, you have. It yeah. Nut is very hard. Nut is very hard. Same problem. Same problem. Whether it is Chironji, whether it is uh, Mawa or Baheda, there are a large number of nuts that are grown in the forest. And we don't have proper nut crackers or for that matter, decorticate. Decorticator. So, the, Decorticator. so the question, the question is, the question is just. Just a moment. Uh, we'll be back. So it is very important. Garima, please go ahead. Garima and Pitti. First Garima, then Pitti. Garima. Garima, please go on. You have raised hand. Keeping. Good evening, sir. Go ahead. Um, sir, thank you so much for a very thought-provoking lecture. I don't know, um, something came to mind after listening to the initial talk, is that when we say that we look for solutions from nature and from native people or people who are our house helps, or people around her who are doing mundane jobs every day and making our life easier. And when we extract ideas from them, um, I think 
it's very important to also make sure that we give back to them for example if we are looking at a specific a uh, phenomena that occurs um in a specific geographical part of the country what are we giving back to them you know that region we should also um be aware of that we should also be sensitive to that and i don't know how much of this will be a part of this lecture series um but i would really like to hear your thoughts on this sir thank you we will, we will uh, thank you so much kitty thank you so much for highlighting this question because we will spend reasonably good time to look at the reciprocity between knowledge providers and knowledge users for such a long time for decades at least for last 100 years the scholars and with due respect to them have gone to the communities documented their knowledge published papers became famous and people remain anonymous isn't it yes sir we want to change this this course will certainly like to discuss this and that is why why the honey bee network was started 33 years ago and i will come to that in a minute but these principles are very important and i am so happy that without my saying this you are raising this issue because once you raise this issue it becomes your question not my question and my task becomes easier when the principles that we want to communicate through this course come from your mind not from my mind or our mind you know i and anamika would like to facilitate with our examples but it is very important that if you anticipate those questions that we would like to discuss our life our task becomes easier our purpose is if you ask me honestly speaking to bring about small cultural revolution a cultural revolution in the way we use the ethics of knowledge exchange between formal and informal sector so much of knowledge of the people has been documented already brought into prior art but published we can come common knowledge now and yet we are not discussed and decided a very precise normative way in which we will share the benefits with them we will make them co-authors we will acknowledge them in our research papers as a co-author we will share with them the findings of our research we will develop the processes which are affordable by them so that we don't develop only what industry can use please remember what mr birendra was saying just now that we have the corticator which industry can use efficiently true but what does it imply it implies that raw material will go from place x say forest to an industry say in a city and value will not be added locally so what happens the income of the people in local areas will remain low this will they will not get the benefit so it is very important you she was saying something Yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Thanks for this great lecture. So, first thing, I'm still stuck on this spider web thing. I'm not able to, you know, calculate ki why we can't, you know, produce this at an industry level if we are having a, a co anti -co coagulant at this level. And I'm I'm a question of I'm a person of questions, not the solutions. Again, we were working on a project where uh, farmers have to go to some lab to get their soil tested. so these are the question now in our mind and we are not able to get it ki whether to pursue it further or not because we don't have any idea ki uh, if we if we go for like uh, if we follow it for one or three or four years and what will be the result and well there is no guidance like that so well i am looking forward to see some guidance like that ki so, we pursue the idea all, to make the life all, simple of persons yeah first of all let me answer this question that a bio factory that farms spider silk that exist here okay. it is thank you here it is all right in 2012 and how this machine has been developed how we collect this spiders spider farm and we identify these and we use them for different kinds of processes so what i'm trying to say is that yes there are people who are asking the same question that you're asking why can't we do that the moment you ask this question why can't we do that solution become half the problem is solved a good question 
well formulated is half the answer isn't it so i think it's a good question that why can't we do that my answer my answer would be yes why can't we do that that's my answer you and you will find out a way what's up what is your background what is your background sir i am in electricity ha b tech in electronics and working on malaria right now all right all right public health informatics and malaria okay 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 but you know spiders web in a form help in collect uh, help in checking the pest problem in the agriculture do you know that yes yes the presence of a spider in a farming system is an indication of a healthy ecosystem and your pesticide use goes down drastically if you have spiders in the field if you read about that you will find out it they they are very helpful mm -hmm. in bio, for bio control so there are many mm -hmm. advantages of that we will not discuss that just now but i will say i will go with you at this moment to say yes this is a good question that if it is useful why can't we harness it at a larger scale and do it in a manner that it can be profitable so let's uh, now come to the what we will take a break at 6 uh, what time shall we take break ashwini what do you think is the right time should we take break at 7 o'clock for the 5 10 minutes because student should maybe uh, huh? quarter to 7 quarter to 7 all right or 7 6:50 you break and 7 o'clock we start again uh, yeah it will be fine what time 6:50 we break okay, and 7 we start again all right all right so we have 6:30 now yeah that will all be right. fine <coughs> okay <coughs> Okay, and then we close at eight o'clock or eight thirty. What do you prefer? All the students. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Fine. We'll do that. We we'll close at eight o'clock, and we will take a break at. Yes, Piyush. Piyush, thank you. Uh, and what did you say? Somebody said something here. Sirisin is can also be used as anticoagulant currently in the phase of development. Very nice, Surajit. Surajit, where are you from? Surajit. Uh, yes, sir. Hmm. Please tell us about what. Sir, uh, yeah. I'm from ISST Guwahati. I'm currently hmm. working on uh, Muga Silk Worm actually. Okay. And are you trying to work on this anticoagulant uh, extraction from Sirisin? Sirisin. No sir, I am actually working on uh, viruses of the silkworm. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. You know that there is an innovator uh, in Guwahati. Muga silk is very hard. You know. Yes, sir. Do you know how to make it soft? Oh, uh, sir, with uh, degumming, it can uh, we can make it soft. Uh, do you know who has developed a method in the informal sector in? Assam. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. I don't know actually. Now this is another question that I have because uh, if somebody develops a innovative method, he gets an award also, and we don't to somehow come to know of that. So uh, this is a problem. This is a problem, and let me show you very brief. video just a uh, 30 second dolal chaudhary soft muga silk fabric dolal chaudhary from assam So Dulal Chaudhary, uh, let me just switch it off. Otherwise, something else will start. Dulal Chaudhary was given a recognition from National Innovation Foundation and Honeybee Network 
and he developed a method of making mua silk soft such that one could make tie one could make umbrella and then he claimed that it stops uh, it, it 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 inhibits the ultraviolet rays reaching us so tejpur university did an analysis and they found that 67% of so ultraviolet rays were inhibited by using an umbrella of mua silk so that was a new functional use of mua silk so just just imagine you doing research in assam not too far from the place where muga where dulal lives if you and dulal join hands surely the research outcome will become more effective isn't it isn't it isn't it true right sir that's what we want if you are looking at a problem how to make muga silk better muga silk softer because it's very hard and somebody has done that maybe that that method is not as efficient as you can make it work together develop it together yes prerita prerita please go ahead you yes, raise your hand yeah actually this video as it showed that uh, this uh, materials uh, that uh, the worms and the spiders they have uv uh, blocking properties uv reflecting properties so the similar i read somewhere that a similar concept was noticed by a research group and uh, to in order to solve a problem that they saw they saw that the birds used to you know they used to uh, crash into window panes uh, and you know get injured uh, but they observed that they didn't uh, like get trapped into certain spider webs so they mm-hmm. noticed that you coating the windows with uh, this with the uv reflecting material uh, on the same lines uh, like a spider web would help solve the issues of birds getting injured so this was a good uh, observation that uh, very interesting very interesting. why don't you write it on uh, the this is a very interesting uh, on glass windows to prevent bird striking them isn't it yes sir i think that's a good thought you should give that reference for everybody to read now this is where the nature inspired us to develop modern solutions and this is something that is in what is your background prerita yes, so i am basically an electronics engineer okay. okay where are you working now so i am currently working with csio chandigarh csio chandigarh okay okay so it might be a good idea to find out whether they had which compound they extracted from the spider web which they use for coating and has it been subsequently synthesized and if so what other properties it has you know just a small paragraph on that you can share with everybody so that our curiosity gets fueled further now you have raised the curiosity quench the curiosity by giving little more information all right yes sir kritika kritika please uh, yes sir good morning good good evening sir i am kritika from csir ncl Mm. uh so i had a question that uh, you are telling that spider webs can help uh, to reduce the pest in the uh, in the land uh, so how yes. do we reach to the farmers to tell them that you can harness it and plus you can use it for the industry purpose as well well the spider and pest control this is there is this subject has been done a uh, lot of research has been done on this okay so this this is not a new thing that i mentioned to you uh the contribution of let me just show you this paper of 2005 uh, uh the role of spiders in agro ecosystem and just one minute we will take to see this so this knowledge is available but uh, what what do spiders do they buffer the limit the initial exponential growth of prey population so predatory this is a predatory kind of it it catch it uh traps the prey and doesn't damage the plant so 19 species in rice ecosystem 13 in maize 16 in soybean 18 in oilseed 21 in cotton etc 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 were recorded so therefore there is a lot of contribution the spider communities make to the agriculture and horticulture for making the system more resilient in pest management and for 
less costly or in fact practically no cost of and so one, so one yeah. more question uh, you uh, uh, like the moga seed you uh, told just now for the uv uh, prohibition uh, yes for making a barrier for uv so isn't it a region specific thing a generic uh, endemic species we can say so well yeah go ahead go ahead please complete so it. if we harness it or if we harvest it more if so isn't the ecosystem going to be uh, 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 affected by it no 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 you see what are we doing we are using moga sail as a inhibitor of of uh, you use various creams for example for preventing your skin from affected from uv rays don't you yes sir many many cosmetics have uh, have claims about certain compound that save your skin from uv rays yes so what one is talking about is that if you use moga silk umbrella it might also have the same way without using the creams you can inhibit the uh, direct incidence yes. of the ultraviolet rays on your skin and thereby keep your a texture better keep your skin better without using any chemical or any so this is the reason why uh, one is talking about but please remember that this is something that you can uh, find a very good application it doesn't inhibit does it inhibit anything does it affect anything no, i mean sir. why would nature be affected why would ecosystem be affected no if for prof if suppose it becomes in fashion Uh, so everybody would like to buy it so, so much everybody... better so many jobs so many jobs will be generated doesn't it that's wonderful if it everybody buys we will have lot of demand for moga silk lot of people will get jobs moga silk is easy to grow you know it is moga silk okay. is on, on castor so castor plant is the host plant for moga okay castor crop we grow in fact 15 to 20% leaves of castor you can take away without causing any harm to castor yield so castor yield will not be affected moga silk will get moga worm will get uh, the feed for uh, its cocoon growth and we will get a healthy silk where is the loss what is the harm there is a harm please tell me so no i was asking if we will uh, harvest it like uh, when we do it for the honey collection the not quality honey, honey, not of honey. the honey is decreased no, no 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 we are not doing let me clarify to you when first of all you should know that moga silk is a non violent silk when the the insect the worm inside silk worm comes out unlike the normal silk where uh, you have to boil it here you don't so okay. this is one advantage many communities we don't want violent silk we can also use it plus it has as i said now it can absorb 85% ultraviolet rays you know 85% now if this is possible and if it is true that will be a good demand in uh, countries where because of ozone layer hole uv incidence on the earth has increased yes sir correct yes. so therefore somebody was mentioning about sericin sericin also protects the skin from uv rays huh so yes. there are there are many studies uh, tasser for example this was published in 9, 2008 this study was paid published and it was published where molecular and cellular biochemistry on june 25 by dr kundu department of biotechnology iit khadakpur let me show you this is a is not a research is not an anecdote just see in 2008 there's a news here where they found the by product of silk can find in skin care product skin from the uv rays and dr subhash chandra kundu from department of biotechnology iit khadakpur published a paper in molecular and cellular biochemistry now you see a very high tech advanced research is being derived 
if we had known if dr subhash chandra kundu had talked to the communities of assam it wouldn't have waited till 2005 maybe he would have published 2008 he would have found this thing maybe 10 years ago this is an evidence isn't it true yes sir so my question is only this that wherever you find evidence of good science this is a good quality science a scientist is publishing in high quality high impact factor journal that news that a publication gets attention of the news media and of course it helps the farmers it helps the ecosystem everybody is gain and nobody loses it from this because it is so easy to rear i mean i just took one example i mean we don't have to get stuck on this shlok yes do you wanted to say something shlok yes sir it was indeed a very inspiring uh, lecture and that spider example kind of opened a lot of uh, like new ideas in each of us minds so i realized the importance of how uh, like important interdisciplinary approach should be there or uh, more the amount of people it might be more cooks to the broad but it might also be beneficial like uh, like i was thinking like in case of spider the the uh, in insects the this secretions are not always uniform so what might be the physiological processes by which we get our biomolecule in a, a larger yield from the spider so we can model modulate them or even engineer them in that way or engineer our whatever rearing method is so each one has their own way to see the idea and like that's why the group thing i felt is really what is your background slope Uh, yes sir i am from uh, a zoology background in masters and i uh, currently i am at csr nio goa nio so yes, what sir. are you working on for your thesis yes sir uh, i am working on uh, sponges like marine sponges on the cell biology okay so Shlok, you have raised a very interesting point that can be work on interdisciplinary basis so for example it, you are right you have you have alluded to that you didn't say but you have alluded to the possibility that different kinds of castor varieties might be used as a feed stock for different quality of airy silk isn't it yes sir we have not done research on that there is not a single paper on that nobody has done it which species which varieties of silk of castor would offer better quality of muga silk we don't know really and this is the kind of interdisciplinary research where a cultural scientist or a botanist molecular biologist who will understand the property of the silk and then try to see which kind of protein they want it is possible that there may be less quantity of silk but more quantity of protein or vice versa so all of these questions are scientific questions we can ask these questions and in the process of answering these questions we can also solve societal problem that is the best part of it the people will be able to then find new ways or better livelihood or more uh, income because you will then find application of their knowledge in high value products let me give another example before we another five minutes how many of you have eaten flax seed how many of you have eaten just raise hand i can see how many people have just quickly 1 2 3 4 five, 5 6 7 now what is that why did you eat it why did you consume it anybody netra why did we consume why did you consume it or sneha or motik anybody yeah go ahead why it's did you it's good for hair sir i've heard like it's good but, for hair but, growth okay and what else does it contain it oh, rich in omega, omega 3 fatty acids, fatty acids. Yes, sir omega 3 fatty acids. it's also helpful for the people who the females who are suffering for the pcod problems they also consume it for the uh, estrogen levels increase in our body system in, uh, for helpful for the womb development sir and okay. also helpful for the hair loss people are also using nowadays now pastel do you know that flax seed was earlier sold for 100 rupees a quintal that means 100 kg for 100 rupees now it is sold 100 gram for 100 or 45 50 rupees right 1000 grams 
in 40 rupees, 100 rupees, let us say for a minute for the sake of simplicity. And earlier, one quintal, 100 kg in 100 rupees. The product remains same. Who has added the value? The consumption is increases. That's why prices increase. But, but, but why? Why? Uh, five, ten years, five years ago, was there was there any market for this? So oh, nowadays, this uh, because of uh, lack of omega three fatty acids in our body, uh, so many people are suffering for the uh, unsaturated fatty acids in our body. They are consuming for the healthy needs. That's no, my question is: uh, Let's say ten years ago. In your family, was anybody talking or uh, talking about uh, flaxseed? Yeah, but they are taking, sir. But they are taking little bit because that time the food uh, quality is very good when compared to nowadays. Why? Because they are using so many pesticides in nowadays. Nee, but this this knowledge of its properties no. that you are mentioning, what these properties known earlier? No. You know, you have added the value. You're the scientist. The scientist characterized its functional property. It's a functional it's food correct. now, correct? Yes. So yes. scientists can add value sometime by not modifying anything at all, but merely by characterizing. You understand the point? Even a lay person knows that it has three or six omega fatty acid and it is good for our health. As uh, Basula mentioned, it, Sandhya mentioned that it is also good for uh, women's problem, it is also good for hair. Now, many people know that and its market has expanded. When its market expanded, do you know flaxseed doesn't need much irrigation? It is a low cost. Well, it's very easy to cultivate. So farmers are getting better price now, thanks to the scientific knowledge that you characterized. Yes, please. This is the popular science that is being uh, used here that it is being uh, characterized like a medicine and everybody is using earlier it was being only eaten by the uh, animals actually it was fed to horses you are right it was a feed of horses earlier yes you know? so yeah it was what? being used the oil cakes were used flax seeds and uh, they were used for uh, the feeding of the horses and the other cattle so but the question is question is Shakunta, the point is that you added value, you meaning the scientific yes. community added value. And yes. who's the income of the poor farmers who are growing this crop yes, they, it increased many increased. Poor, isn't it? Yes. Nowadays, they are doing it very uh, honestly and now they are paying attention. Earlier, it was like, a, uh, in Hindi, we call it as a kharpatwar ki chhi ke aagai. Right. So, right. the animals will eat. Now, it is being used as a medicine. So, they also pay attention while cultivating. So my, 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 my uh, point it is, should be up to the mark quality. yeah before we break now for 10 minutes and take rest and I'm you know I'm standing so I would suggest all of you please if you're sitting for a long time just stand up for a while in your home room wherever you are to stretch your body it is not good to sit for long I mean, I'm sorry. They, they, they back pain I have had a problem a few days ago because I was sitting long time for many classes in the last few weeks so it is good for you to stand up, do some exercise, drink water, and we'll meet at 7 o'clock again. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.
कि कच्चे आमले का लकड़ी की कच्ची घानी में सीट निचोड़ा रहता है बिना एक वेलकम बैक वेलकम बैक वेलकम बैक वेलकम बैक जस्ट जस्ट गिवे वन मिनट प्लीज म्यूट कीप म्यूट अक्षय आपको म्यूट रखिए अनलेस यू वांट टू आस्क समथिंग और शेयर समथिंग मेघा जरा प्लीज कीप चेकिंग द म्यूट बटन फॉर दोस हु आर अनोइंगली स्टार्ट टॉकिंग जस्ट टू एंड यू डोंट लूज टाइम एवरीबॉडी इज बैक ले अपना वीडियो ऑन कर लो थोड़ा सा आई वुड लाइक टू सी सम ऑफ यू ये इट लुक्स वेरी स्ट्रेंज टू टॉक टू अ ब्लैंक स्क्रीन विद जस्ट नेम्स thank you thank you thank you thank you you know i draw energy from all of you so please abu janaid anil bhushan prashant shlok kritika ravi please kriti kriti sandhya saikat anup pranav please switch on your videos please unless you have a problem of connection but please do. all right one of the comment i found on the chat was that you want to understand the course better so let me go back to the slide of the outline and just give you quickly overview of what we're going to do so yes there are presentations in the class and one of the presentation we will have is on the unmet need unmet need that you would identify for uh, Unmet need could be in the family of your grandfather or mother. It could be of the workers. It could be societal need of some community. It could also be of a small industry. It could be of a vendor. It could be basically of the eight hundred million people. That's why it is called the entire eight hundred. So the larger number of people who are not being reached enough by our scientific and technological uh, know how they are on my feet the second session of course is on why do we live with problem unsolved so i would like some of you to bring examples of inertia that you see around you inertia could be in the lab inertia could be in the field inertia could be in the families and how do we create what do we do to make our society impatient with inertia you know a lot of things that we live with uh, without changing them for a long time and that's the reason why our society is not progressing as well or as fast as we would like so this is very important third session is uh, let me just do third session is on identifying the unmet need so in this session each one of you will bring uh, the example some of you will bring the example in the next class some will bring in the up to uh, 30th class and you can send it by we will share a spreadsheet ashwini can share or anamika one on one of our team members will share you can add the unmet need along with your name scientific background lab where you are year in which you are 
and the need that you have identified. So we have a similar need sheet of last time. We will also use this time. My suggestion is when you identify the need, it is not necessary that you have to solve it, but it should be a significant need, unmet need, solution of which will affect a lot of people or help them, or for that matter, elderly people. The next class is on creating an ecosystem for inclusive development. So I'll tell you about how did Honeybee Network start 33 years ago and why we should try to blend it. And I will give you an example of a paper that was published on April 10, 2021, where the pine wood uh, was used for water purification. Simple, the high tech technology was used for very mass scale application. And the student who did this work, an Indian student at MIT, had tried to develop this solution. I'll try to see if I can get her to the class so that you can see. One of one student like you, a PhD student like you, uh, did an excellent work both in the field and in her lab. And using the principle of xylem and phloem, which means the one which takes moisture from the root to the edge of the tree, and the one which brings it down, using that one-way flow capability of the wood, xylem and phloem, uh, she developed a water filter and a very high quality water filter. So this is an example where very ordinary material can be put to extraordinary use with high quality of science. And this paper you can read. So this is about number eight when we look at the ecosystem characteristics. Uh, number 13, we will look at traditional knowledge for developing affordable and sustainable solutions. Uh, we took some examples today, but you, you would like to bring examples from your own families, your own parents, and uh, you will fill up those examples with the name of your aunt, uncle, or neighbor uh, who have shared this knowledge. And if you can find a reference, please put a reference also there. So that, but then there are some knowledge bits where we'll be having no reference. So that is unique knowledge. And there we should try to do something more to see if that knowledge could be protected in the name of the community whose knowledge it is. We will try. Uh, you will also talk, as I said here, the assignment is given here. This PPT, Ashwini, have you shared this with them? Or you can share it with them, please. It will become easier for them. to yes, so It was shared with the, all the registered students. You have already shared, no? Yes. So good. So you have this PPT with you. We will look at how this can be done. So um, six is, we will look at examples where modern and uh, local knowledge have been used. So we will do a case study of milk for viral control. And I'll share with you some example how high quality science is now acknowledging the use of milk for viral control in animal and crop. And how Department of Agriculture in Manitoba, Canada, Ontario has given a recommendation that milk is as good as anything else for washing the utensils of the tools in the garden, particularly to avoid viral disease in rows and some other crops. So that is the session on 15th. Then we have session on 20th. What role does open innovation play? How can we promote open innovation? What should we do? What are the pedagogical tools in the age of IP? How can open innovation also make its presence felt? Then we have nature, learning from nature and common people, show the Atra, we tell you about show the Atra stories and how communities which survive under stress against all odds are the thing that we can learn. So the thing that we have talked to today, today we'll find out. Uh, session nine is on diffusion of incent innovations, incentives for scaling innovations. What kind of incentives we can develop? And we'll also look at the examples and how decentralized development of solution in the spirit of Ranghian philosophy can help our society. Can that be combined with the modern reach, outreach of large corporations? Is there a plan possible? And the session 10 is then policy and institutional implications for research prioritization, pursuit of utilization by industry and company. So how do we 
what are the policy changes that we need and what are the policy features that we can adapt and see how we move forward. The very fact that we could do a great job during COVID by developing indigenous diagnostics and vaccines and so on shows that our research system has a lot of capacity, but yet this capacity is sometimes not utilized for solving target problems. So what kind of policy inducements we need? Then we have presentation of your synopsis uh, during this number first to third, and we will have different groups. It will be done in group, and groups could be interlap. So if there's a problem where we need multiple skills, then leave those groups across the lab. So you have somebody from NCL, somebody from NPL, somebody from Demo, somebody from CMAP. If you're wanting some medicinal plant and you want some chemical process and you also want some physical changes in the surfaces of certain kind of materials that we are using, so then surface physics is involved. So the group can be interdisciplinary so that your proposal that you write will be your CSR 800 proposal. It has already been agreed that these will be acceptable if your internal lab process is also okay, as it has happened in many labs, you don't have to do another project for meeting the requirement for your PhD CSR. Ashwini, that is correct? Yes, sir. Correct. Yeah, so that has been already agreed. So your work, we are not increasing your work, but we are trying to give a direction to this work so that at least you would have developed a good review in your project on a problem which, when shared with the world at large, might help in developing the solution. Anybody else in the country or around or outside the country could develop an open solution based on your review. That would be the greater advantage. So this is what the course is about. Any question before we proceed to the day's session? Quickly, if there are clarification which you are about the course, how we will go about what pedagogy we are using, what kind of assignments we will have. If there's any question, please tell us. There is a common address. Ashwini, you made a mail group of these students. Please share with me also. Not yet made it. I'll... Yes, Rakesh Kumar, it is right. You don't have to do a separate 800 coursework. This is a substitute for that. So therefore, it is very important that the project that you develop and that you, which we will share in your lab with your supervisor and others, should convince them that what you have thought through either intra-lab group or inter-lab group is worthwhile problem that you are addressing so that it uh, adds to the repertoire of lab in terms of meeting the goals of CSR. I will caution you again that sometimes you do take a project which are the conventional lab-oriented project. So for example, if there's a waste in the mining, how that waste can be utilized. Now that's not CSR 800 project. That is a project that lab should do and would do. If this course was not there, even then you would do that research. So please don't bring such projects. Focus on the unmet need of the communities, which with your uh, perspective and sensitivity, you would like to address. Is that clear? Everybody is clear? No questions? So then we'll proceed. All right. So. Let me start with the first slide. This is a picture that Anamika had taken, and I like it very much. You see that these you cannot see are... the screen, sir. Oh, you're not seeing the screen. Sorry, sir. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Sheena, you can go ahead with your question. Yeah, go ahead, please. Go ahead. Go ahead, please. Go ahead, go ahead. You know, if you have a question, please go ahead. It's faster if I talk. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to ask that you said that uh, we'll make inter-lab groups. Yeah. Uh, so the thing is that uh, some of us had already formed a group and started working towards the 403. So does that mean that it has to be redone? I cannot say anything without knowing what you're doing. Uh, so I would leave it to you. I will leave it to your judgment. Okay. Uh, I mean, we are flexible. In the sense that if you think that, that the group that you have formed and is addressing a very real need of society, share that. And if group or us can suggest some modification, if you can accommodate them, by all means do it. If not, then whatever submission you do for the course can be a shorter one and you can do your project separately, not a problem. So we are flexible on that account. The interlab uh, group, inter group is not compulsory, it is desirable. 
Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other question? All right. So I'll come back to this picture, which I like very much because of the reason that it conveys something so fundamental in the innovation discussion. You know, these ducks are moving in one direction and this one is in a different direction. And I believe this is what Honeybee Network has done. We have looked for the oddball, somebody who is not following that trend, who is different, but not different for the sake of it, but also has a direction as a purpose and pursues that purpose relentlessly with passion. So when passion fulfills the purpose and we follow a process which is scientific, which is meaningful, we get performance. And this performance can be sustainable if we also have a platform. So we will discuss this and let's see how this search for oddity has helped us. So what does Honeybee Network do? Let me define this. So look at this logo, nameless, faceless person. You see this logo, comes in contact with the network. This is Honeycomb Network. That's an identity, the third figure that you see. So we identify people at the grassroots level, unknown people, ordinary people, but who have solved a problem with creativity. And when they get into the network, they get identity. Many of them get award. Some of them have been the guest of the Honorable President of India for two weeks. Some in few cases, three weeks. They stayed as a guest and have been connected to the various ministries, cabinet ministers to take their ideas forward. So what are we trying to do? We are trying to give voice, visibility, and velocity to the creative and innovative people in formal sector and informal sector. For formal sector, we have Gandhian Young Technological Innovation Award. Some of you might be familiar with it. Some of the students have got it in the past. Uh, these awards, GYTI awards are for MSc and PhD students. In life sciences, with the help of BIREC, Biotechnology Industry Research Assistance Council, which I had written the concept note of way back in 2009, 2007, if the council came into being in 2012, a body of DBT, and we provide 15 lakhs to 15 people. This year, we are providing 10 people, 10 students. They get two years fellowship grant of 15 lakh. The other disciplines of engineering, we don't have yet any financial component, but they also get the award. And this award is one of the most prestigious awards for the students today and helps them to make a name for themselves. Generally, IITs, ISER, ISC, GNCSR, etc., have got most of the awards so far. For some strange reason, I do not know why not many students from CSIR apply for it, for whatever reason. But these awards are open, they have to be applied at Pyrex site for life sciences and for others at gyti.techpedia.org. So we are trying to recognize the creativity in formal sector, in students and also the informal sector, the farmers, the artisans, the mechanics, and we'll see some examples today. We also have, this date has been changed now, this is 31st December uh, 2021, HP and Priya Award. This award is open for everybody, any adult, all of you are can send your entries for this award. And this award is a global award. So last year we got 2,500 entries, we reviewed from 87 countries. And the award function will be on November 16. And I will send you the link. And Anika, kindly send the link to all of them. We can announce the link. And all of you are welcome to attend the award function. The students, I mean, the innovations from Turkey, from Ecuador, from Philippines, from various countries have been are being recognized by us. Yes, 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 Saida. This award is open for all students and scholars even scientists for that matter, and grassroots people. But the awards are for creativity, for inclusive innovation award. And we network creativity and inclusive. We want awards to solve a problem that poor people face in some sense, or the student people face. Jan coordinate that. We are at jan.org, or that link is here. Uh, we have extended already. 
Now, this is, we were talking about spiders, web, but I'm using here as a metaphor. So the metaphor is that the thread is very weak. But once they are connected, interconnected, the network becomes very strong. That's the power of the network, which is not just synergistic means, but it also builds upon the strengths of the nodes which are connected. So it's very important that we recognize that future belongs to network. Alone, we will not be able to solve the problem. Through networks, we will be able to solve the problem. It is important to recall four kinds of capital that we harness for solving various problems of our society. First capital that came into being is natural capital. When human beings started to socialize, they made tribal groups. Say 10, 15,000 years ago, when human beings started to organize in the bands, bands became tribe. Tribe then organized themselves into territories. So first was natural capital. I will harvest the fruit from this trees or these trees and you will harvest from there. I'll catch fish here, you will catch fish there. So people started drawing boundaries around resources. People started accumulating resources, firewood, drying fish, either in the sun or on the fire. In Northeast, even today, there are fish dryers, dry fish and preserve it, eat it. So when the commoditization of nature is started, drawing, people drawing, started drawing boundaries, people started claiming territories, it became capital from a resource. Interestingly, two other capitals came into being there, social capital and ethical capital. So let's say you are a fishing community member and you are using fishnet, gillnet, and this gillnet is, the community has made a norm that nobody will use the gillnet less than four inches mesh size. That means the fish smaller than four inches girth will not be caught. That's very good. It's good for population dynamics. If you catch the small fish also, then the, then the fish will not grow enough, will not spawn, will not lay eggs. Fish population will be affected. The beauty is that in social capital, if you violate the rule, suppose you use a gill net of less than four inches, three inches or two inches, then your behavior can be sanctioned. You can be punished. Punishment can be on the community or anybody can say, well, what you're doing is wrong because there's an norm we have all decided collectively. You should follow this norm. So there's a trust that if I follow, you will also follow. Reciprocity and third party sanction. Sanctions could be external regulation. Ethical capital, on the other hand, is when nobody else is going to censor your behavior if you violate the norm. You feel bad about yourself. Internal regulation. When internal regulations guide your behavior, then it is ethical capital. So you do work in the lab. There's an observation which is at odd with the hypothesis. You can decide to ignore it. You can decide to include it. It is your judgment. It is a call between you and your data. Nobody else is in the picture. You can reject, you can include, and then create little noise in your observation saying that, look, uh, my data doesn't support unequivocally what I thought was true. There are conditions under which the rules change or behavior of phenomena changes. So when we internally regulate, that becomes ethical capital. So let's say there's a norm that during the spawning period, when the rains come, fish goes upstream and lays the egg in estuaries, low-lying water on the shore in the estuaries where the backwater goes in Kerala, for example, many other places you know. And fish becomes very dull. It is easy to catch. But interestingly, all around the world, there's a taboo on catching fish during spawning period because if you catch them at that time then that will not be laid if eggs are not laid then the whole fish population will be affected so from sustainability perspective it is bad but then there are no external sanctions for this behavior it is the internal sanction it's a norm it's not a rule and 
if you don't follow, nobody will do anything, but you feel that you should follow it. So ethical capital is when we regulate our behavior from within. Social capitalism behavior is regulated from outside. And intellectual capital is the knowledge of all of these exchanges. And intellectual part, property is a small part of intellectual capital from the commercial application of which you can exclude others for a given period of time, say 20 years, in the case of Peter. So these are the four capitals that you ought to know about. It's not very complicated, simple, but it helps us to see the interface between social capital, natural capital, ethical capital, and general capital. And of course, if you increase the ethical capital in any society, the need for supervision goes down. Our quality goes up because we all regulate our behavior ourselves. We don't need a superman, uh, supervisor. We don't need a policeman to check our behavior. So in many countries, when you go, you don't find traffic policemen. People follow the rules internally without fearing the sanction. But on the highways they do, there are speed checkers. Because many, many people violate. So you have social sanctions. It depends. In certain conditions, ethical capital works very well. Let's take this example. Some of you are from Northeast. You may be familiar in Meghalaya. In our great village, we were having Shodhyatra. We saw this bridge. So we asked the people, why did you make a bridge of tree roots? You could have made of wood, you could have made of iron, you could have made of concrete. There are so many materials for which, of which which has been made. Then they said, no, but we wanted to make a bridge which is sustainable, which doesn't create any load on the environment. So first culprit is culture, which raised this question, we have to be some, do something different, something sustainable, something with having low entropy. In this case, entropy is very, very minimal. Stones are there and the roads are growing around these stones. No wastage, you know, practically. So first you see, Oh, these trees around the river, if you wanted something, they look like rope. Maybe we can use them. That's technology. Culture raised the question. Technology provided an alternative. Suddenly, the root became a resource. You see the point? That's the beauty of good questions. Questions make resources which were invisible, visible. You start seeing opportunities which you were missing because they were not good questions. So it's very important to have those questions. And then it is, yes, Northeast Meghalaya we are talking about. And the third is, but we can't do it alone. We need a group action, institutions. So we can't, so, so science is the alphabet, building block. Technology is the word. Institutions are grammar, rules. Culture is the thesaurus, which gives variety, which gives diversity, which makes us to do something different, something sometimes better. And these are the four pillars of sustainability. We need all the four to build ecosystem. We need norms, we need values, we need rules, we need technologies, and of course we need building blocks which science provides. Does it make sense? Any question? Any question before we proceed further? All right. Okay, let's go further. Now let us go to the definition of inclusive. At the time we are using inclusive development. What is the meaning of inclusive development? Inclusive development is which overcomes the exclusion by these six factors. So let's say spatial exclusion. There are mountains. There are regions where medical facilities cannot reach. Education does not reach many times. Transport cannot reach. So we were in a valley in Ladakh. Uh, our friend from Ladakh will pay attention to this. So we were with my students. We were we crossed a pass, bent down to valley, and student said, "Sir, but somebody falls sick. What will they do? Do they have a hel helicopter facility?" People said, "No." They laughed. They said, "No, no, no, no." So then, if somebody gets cut or wounded, what do you do? So one fellow went and brought a small box, like a geometry box, and showed a thin film which was there in the box, preserved. He said, we apply this. 
the student asked, what is this? They said, you know, when we cut the animals for meat purposes, there's a layer below the skin. We dry it and keep it as a solution for healing the wound. Do you know what is the layer? What is the material for this layer? Anybody? What is it called? Anybody from CLRI? What is this material called? Any biology student? What do we have under the skin of these animals? What is that layer? We also have it. Human beings also have it. Anybody? A fat layer. Collagen. Correct? This collagen, in fact, there's a student, PhD student, I was giving a lecture, I do my memorial lecture at CLRI this year. And I found that it was one student who was doing his thesis there or had published a paper on collagens used for wound healing. And then I told them that, look, if only you had listened to the Ladakhi people, this thesis would not be done in 2021. You would have done it 20 years ago, 50 years ago. So collagen is a very useful material. Even in the eggs, those of you who eat eggs must have seen, below the egg shell, there is a layer. That's also collagen. And this layer has a high rate of regenerating the cells. So when you have wound or something of this kind, you can use a bandage made of this collagen and it will help heal faster. But this region which has been bypassed, knowledge has been bypassed, people have been bypassed, facilities have not reached them. So innovations which help us reach those regions are inclusive innovation. They are including those spaces of our country which have remained out of developmental system. Certain sectors are excluded. So many of you know that, again, I will take example from Northeast. In Northeast, almost every house has a handloom. I've been, I've walked in every state. How many of us have bought a handloom from Northeast? Anybody? Not from Northeast, but anybody outside the Northeast has bought a handloom made in Northeast? Anybody? Unlikely. Why? Why is it that, yes, Somebody has a Ganu Prosti. What did you buy? From where did you buy this handloom, Ganu? Sir, I bought it from Meghalaya. Meghalaya. The shawl it was, yes, sir. Okay. But you know, outside of Northeast, we seldom buy the handloom from Northeast, isn't it? Is it true? Yes, I have bought a shawl from Odisha handloom also. Okay. But yes. generally, handloom is one area where there have been not much technological changes not many process changes. Therefore, handloom weavers after the farm laborers are the second poorest people. You know, they buy yarn at very high cost, they make cloth, then they sell it to the traders. Their living conditions are not very good. So certain sectors are excluded. Similarly, farm tools. If you look at the tools that laborers use, the sickle that they use, even today, no new material has reached them. Sickle gets blunted very fast. How do we use materials which have high temper, will not get blunted easily? A question that we have not answered. Seasons. So when flood is there, a lot of regions are excluded. How do we reach them? You know, Rwanda much less economically developed than us. If you go to web and search Rwanda blood supply drones, you will find they have been using drones for almost eight to nine years now for supplying blood to the accident victims, to the, to the delivery cases. And we have not, you are right, in Gamma Kashmir, in, in Himalayan region, Eastern Himalayan, Western Himalayan region, when there's a hailstorm, some regions get cut off. Lahore Spiti, for a few months, Rotang Pass, there's a snow so much that you cannot pass through it, it gets cut off. 
I have been to Lord Sweety also. We have gone with the students. So please understand that seasonal exclusion takes place. But please, please, up, Megha, you can come with me. हाँ ऐसा हो सकता है आप तो जो भी आओ ना उसके आगे न्यूज़ करों को मैं अभी दिखाते हैं ये नोवल प्लीज़ प्लीज़ म्यूट योरसेल्फ कंपनी हैज़ नॉट म्यूटेड डांसर्स काइंडली टेक केयर निगा आ रही थी हाँ सर हाँ तो म्यूट कर दिया करो ना कब गलती से किसी का फोन माइक ऑन है और प्रेस करने में थोड़ा दो एक दो uh seasonal fluctuation seasonal exclusion during the hailstorm during the snow during the flood some regions get excluded how do we reach that what kind of technologies we use what kind of method we use? what kind of storage system we develop for storing food which doesn't get spoiled so in uh, gorej valley we found that people make underground pits not only to grow vegetables, but also to store vegetables and grains underground, 10 feet deep, 8 feet deep. So there are some indigenous solutions, but many of them are not very effective, so people suffer. There are social segments, there are certain communities, you all know, who have been excluded for a long time from developmental systems. While we do have reservation and all, but again, it is not sufficient. We need to build their capacity. I don't know how many of you know that during the COVID, how, what percentage do you think of the children who did not get online education because they didn't have access to it? How many percentage of our country children had this su uh, suffering? How many, what percentage of children suffered from lack of access to internet or smartphone? They could not access education. What is, your num what is the number you think? Anybody? More than 50%. You're right. Can you imagine a country where 50% children are out of the educational system for last 18 months or 20 months and the country doesn't bother? How is it possible? Why is it possible that we are not discussing? There are no headlines in the newspaper about children, 50% children who are out of the education system. And mind you, these children are from government schools. These children are from the working class family, they are the poorest children. That is why they can't afford a smartphone. So it is a social exclusion. Sometimes it is an account of caste. Sometimes it is an account of cultural, ethnic background. Sometimes it is an account of regions where you are there, interior regions. But there are such social segments which are excluded. What do we do to overcome that? How do we provide one of the award we gave under the United Mind Award. This is an award for children. So yesterday, Dr. Kalam Badre, it was announced. Uh, the child said, why can't there be a call center, call, toll free call center? I can call that number and get all the answers to my questions. I can download or I, uh, I can uh, get the educational guidance from this number. This country can afford to make call center for children. It is not difficult. But it will come in conflict with Baiju's or this word and other companies which are doing coaching. But coaching is available to only those whose parents can afford it. What about poor children? So it's very important that we realize that there are social segments which get excluded and we need to find new ways. Skills and knowledge, certain kinds of skills get excluded. A person may be very good in climbing a tree, for example, for coconut harvesting, you need to tree climbers. But if you develop new solutions or people don't grow the coconut anymore, then of course those skills will go out of use. So there are many skills which are excluded, though the skills are not more, no more required in the marketplace. So many workers, construction workers, might have been very good mason, very good uh, farmers, very good artisan, very good weaver. But when the value of those skills went down, there was nothing much done to incorporate them. They became so-called unskilled. There's nothing like unskilled. I don't believe any human being is unskilled. 
almost every human being will have something which he can or she can do better than others. But we have not paid attention to those skills. And the last factor which leads to exclusion is the structure of governance. So by, by design of institutions, we exclude people. So let's say if you do not have a chance to stay in a village or in a mountain or in a coastal region among the fishing community, say you are an NIO, and let's say you never got chance to stay in a fishing community to understand how fishing communities interpret the waves. When they go for offshore fishing, what are the uncertainties they face? What knowledge system they use? But we have not given you a chance to go there. By design, by the institutional structure of the lab, we have not allowed you. Let us say, I'm just saying for the sake of argument. I'm not saying it is true, but assume for a minute. Then that is by design we are excluding the communication between or connection between you and the people. Or if a criteria is like this, that for 800 people, we will give one extension worker, 800 families. In high density region, 800 families will be in one square kilometer or five square kilometers. But in low population region, where population density may be less than 10, 15 or 20 people per square kilometer, 800 will be a large area. For covering large area, you have one worker. And for covering one village, you also have one worker. How unfair it is. So, so such a system, such a system of, of policies, of regulation, of rules is unfair. We are creating inequity by design, not by accident, not because of other reasons. So sometimes structure of governance itself can lead to exclusion. And we should be very careful about that. Uh, if supposing there is a form that has to be filled up for applying for a job, and that form is available only online, and there is no community um, information center in my village, there is nobody who can provide me connection. In fact, my village may be out of network. Then I'm out of that possibility of a job, isn't it? Because that's available for people who have access to online. So while digital governance is very important, but then a country has 50% people out of the digital access, we must understand how will we reach those people. So we cannot exclude people by design, by policy, by institutional design. We must find ways. So some of you might know Professor Samir Bhantari, former DGCSIR, and his friends started a helpline in West Bengal, in Kolkata, Sahajpat. And or search path, and they are providing a toll free access in Bengali to children to answer their school questions in math and science, not for all subjects, but at least for math and science, which is good, very good step. Why can't the rest of the country do it? So, there are, there are areas where by design we are excluding poor people from the developmental benefits, and we should reflect on that. I mean, you are going to be the leader. Some, some of you will be heading the lab. Some of you will be heading the DG. That will become the DG of CSIR. And if you don't pay attention to these problems, they will probably, these problems will never get away. So what kind of governance structure we make? What kind of institutions we design that will not pour, that will not bypass? So let me take one case and then I'll stop and invite your questions. So there is a case of bad design, good intentions. Why good intention? Yes, hand pump is useful. So when you drink water from hand pump, a lot of water overflows from your hand, isn't it? Have, have some of you used hand pump? Have you faced this problem? Some of you have used hand pump? Yes, sir. yes sir. So when you drink, why, why water overflows? Because the output, the, the diameter of the pipe is about inch and a half or inch and a half more than one, one inch and a quarter. Your hand cannot hold so much of water. So water spills over. For filling bucket is okay. Not for drinking. So what did two innovators do? Swambhu Sharma gave an idea which Kumavat and Chandan Agrawal blent it further. And they made a, uh, Yusuf and Kumavat made a retrofitting device of 100 rupees which had a small pipe, small tap for drinking water, bigger one for filling the bucket. 
and if some water still spills over then cattle can drink water see the point so inclusivity is not just for human beings also non human sentient beings for birds for squirrels for animals they are also to be included in the development process it was a very good example that one of you gave earlier i think kiran or somebody who said that a material was extracted from the web which when polished on the glass you have given it, i think in chat you have put that reference will prevent bird from striking with the glass and then getting hurt now that's an inclusivity why would you do that because you face you feel about the birds that's why you develop such solution you could have ignored it you didn't so that is inclusivity and that's very good that we so we try to be inclusive of the poor people we try to be inclusive of the thirsty people who and we want to be inclusive of nature we don't want to waste water but we also want overflow water to be accumulated in a trough for animals in rajasthan where even a drop matters this is very helpful this can be very good so this is an example of how we can learn from small problems how do we solve them which is possible to solve them another example a motorcycle based flying machine mansu bhai jagani got it patent in 2003 in usa three Honeybee Network helped three innovators. Gyan was the one who helped to file an application. Licensed to Certi, 2003 they were granted patents in US, which means that these solutions had not been anticipated in the prior art. This is the, this one is for cotton crop. You can move on the top crop. <clears throat> this is for both for groundnut crop or other crops. This is another example, and then let me see how much time is there. I should leave at least ten, twelve minutes for the discussion. So one more example. So you see, in China, we have a very strong network in China, in Tianjin University. So one farmer wanted to carry goods across the big lake, so he converted his boat into motor. In Kerala, and mechanic Vinod wanted to convert a motor or a car into boat. This is a much costlier way of solving the problem. Converting a car into a BBS car is a very costly solution. Converting boat into motor is a very cheaper solution. Interesting. Same problem triggers different kind of solutions across the world, and that's something we must learn from. But here is a very different example. A farmer innovator in Maharashtra, Gopal Bhai, he said, used a cycle hoe. Chinese farmers also developed cycle hoe. Similar problem, similar solution across the continent, uh, across the mountains, in two civilizational societies. So it's very interesting that when we face a challenge, we need to pay attention to how different communities are responding to it. And some of those solutions may be inefficient. Some of them may be inadequate. That's where the role of scientists and technologists comes. can we improve them can we change the angle how do we use what do we do the design so that our force is having maximal impact otherwise the whole will jump so we come to a point where unmet need how do i stop here maybe i should stop here and leave some time for you to discuss because we have only 13 minutes before 8 o'clock so far whatever have i said in terms of how we look at the knowledge system how we look at the scope for improvement the unmet need what i mentioned in this slide that i removed was abhav se apeksha that means something i don't have something i want to have something i don't have something i want to have but i don't know that i can have it so i don't ask for it so you find a lot of people have learned to be helpless learned helplessness is one of the biggest barrier in development we learn to be helpless what can i do alone oh this world is like that nobody is going to listen to my voice of course they will listen to your voice why will not they listen to your voice if you have a good point sooner or later maybe not immediately but you get attention 
sooner or later. It matters to share. So how do we identify the needs when people don't complain? A lot of people in our society have learned to adjust with the problems. They don't complain. They don't articulate. So let me stop here and ask you, what would you do to find out such problems? Anand? Nawal? Anybody? How would you identify the unmet need? Uh, if you go to field, uh, like we use for our work, that's how we got to know the local problem. That's one way. That's one way. You all, of course, also do with you. The point is, and this point that I was just making here was that when you look at a pain point, and this pain point is not leading to an expectation of change. There's a gap. It could be historical, it could be relative, it could be absolute, it could be contemporary. The gap could be in my own need. So your father or your grandfather gets up from the bed and he has to use a lot of efforts. So one student, I was teaching this class in IT with my friend Taku in IDC, Chakravarti. And one student said, sir, my father faces difficulty while getting up from the bed. I said, what is the height of the bed? So I didn't pay attention. I said, what is the angle at which the knee is from the body? I didn't pay attention. You're an engineering student. Do you realize that if angle is at acute, if not 90 degrees, then effort required will be more. So raise the height of the bed by a little few inches and your father will have less difficulty in getting up. Can you imagine? Many of us have this problem in our home and we don't pay attention to the angle at which our knees are or our parents' knees are. For years and years, we would not raise the height of the bed to make it 90 degree, and they will suffer. Is it true or is it wrong? Is it true, Terry? Yes. Why, what makes us live with this kind of problem? Why don't, we, why don't we feel this problem? Why don't we feel this problem? What is lacking in us? Resistance to change or towards change is uh sometimes barrier us from doing something different. But change will be the next step. After you identify the problem, then the question will come how to solve it. And when, then you find a solution, then question will come whether we adopt the solution. So there are two, st three steps in between. But my first step is, do I identify the problem? You know, uh, how is that? Sir, the lack of empathy lack is of one empathy. of so, you know, uh, sir, um, um, I think we start looking for more complex solutions to a problem like, um, you know, or maybe accept it as is that my father is getting old. So that is why maybe he's having a problem or let me go look for a very high tech medical solution rather than, as you said, for a very simple thing that could solve his problem very easily without any, um, uh, any, um, um, any money spent or anything. I mean, think, things that are in front of our eyes, but we uh, make our own problems very complex in terms of how we deal yes. with them. It's a very good point. It's a very good point that we sometimes tend to complicate situations far too much and we don't want to pay attention to simpler solutions. Very good point. I agree with you. And it wasn't true that sometimes simpler solutions can be very useful. Uh, we had a problem and we had asked uh, a question and I would like to leave this question to you all. Many of you know who eats the cold food in our home. Mothers. Mothers. Mothers must have done a crime. To give birth to us. So this question was asked in a class. Again, there were about 250 students. Here there are more than 240 students. And we asked this question and the answer came, mother. So I said, for one week, you will cook food for your mother, hot food. So the student had to be cooked food, IIT Bombay. And IMA also, I did that. And Anamika was there in that course in the schedule course last year. 
So we said you will take a photograph of uh, the food, first bread that you cook, the last one that you cook after a week, photograph of the kitchen, tools that you used, and whatever feeling you had. Of course, it was very insightful discussion. But then one student said, sir, that rolling plate, if that height was a little higher, my mother wouldn't have to bend so much in the front that she bends. Now, look at this way. All of you have observed the height of the rolling plate. Say, hey, if it could be slightly higher, you can stand erect and don't, you don't have to bend from the shoulders. Is it true? Can anybody tell me? Those who have cooked roti root in the kitchen, is there a problem yes, with the design? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. <laughs> Because mother doesn't complain. She doesn't so we complain. We increase the height of slab for her. Sorry? We increase the height of slab for her according to her height. That's right. So then what will happen is that you can roll it very easily by standing erect and your back will not pain and your shoulder will not pain. Your neck will not pain. Correct? Yes, sir. But karte nahi hai na? Generally, most of the people. Is that right or wrong? Yes, so what sir. you're saying is that when you said empathy or sambedana, sambedana is a beautiful word. We'll discuss that in the next class. And not to say that sometimes when you don't experience the problem, even in the most affectionate relationship, your own mother, it is not because you don't love her. You, of course, love her. And she loves you. She doesn't complain. That is, is that the reason why she should suffer? But we don't notice it. Why don't we notice it? Because we have not paid attention. Why don't we pay attention? Because we are busy somewhere else. But sometimes the problem also becomes so regular that we, uh, even if unintentional, we stop giving attention to that. Is there somebody from uh, CMAP here? Anybody from CMAP? Or NBRI? Anybody from NBRI? You know what? All of us have kitchen waste, correct? In our home. Do we have a small, efficient biodigester at home which can convert this kitchen waste into good manure? Do we have it? Aman, do we have a good biodigester, a household level digester with whatever microbial? Uh, starter that you may give so that I can put that starter and then have a small turning device inside so that I turn it and in a few days time it will become manure and I can use it for my kitchen garden. Do we have such a biodigester? Is it difficult to make? So we can use a clay pot like a matka also Correct. to but do then this. The problem is that yes I have used it. Problem is that it will attract a lot of mosquitoes and uh, it will uh, sometimes also be all smell and flies and all of that. So you need to have a better way by which digestion is faster and at the same time uh, effect, efficient. So you will need some biodigesting microorganisms, culture, starter culture, composter as they call it, or decomposer, and maybe a turning device of some kind so that it keeps turning. Simple thing, nothing very great, but it's possible. The reason I'm saying is that a lot of problems that we get used to, and one of you have said, and I think it is correct, we get habituated to bear pain. We get habituated to bear the inadequacy. How do we overcome this problem of living with the problem unsolved indefinitely? What is the way? This is the session that we are going to discuss next time. Why does inertia occur? Because we have learned to live with problems unsolved indefinitely. That is the top reason why we suffer. So next class, we, have, we will discuss this inertia. And I would like you to bring some examples of both the way inertia has persisted in our life and also the way we, have, we can try to overcome it. Some examples of how inertia was overcome and some examples of how inertia persists. How We'll continue to be living in an inefficient world, inefficient, ineffective system, tools which are not effective. 
our knife is not very sharp and useful. I don't know whether it is ignorance, Sarabji, Sarabjot. I'm not sure whether it is because of ignorance. Yes, ignorance can be partly reason. We are not looking for a good solution. Have you, how many of you have used a threader for the needle? You know, there's a small device which comes by which you can put thread inside the needle eye. How many of you have used it? Honestly, tell me. You know what I'm saying? Very simple device. A threader comes. In European society, almost every house has it. But in our country, it is not so easy. Threader, you know. So there is a small wire, diamond kind of structure. You put in the needle and then put the thread inside that hole and pull it out of the needle and your thread is there. How many of you have used this threader? Tell me honestly. I have used. Amit, you have used, okay. Abhijah has used. I have used, sir. Three. But you know, this is an example. Something can be done better. Life of my mother or father, whosoever does this, stitching at home, can be made easier. She will keep on struggling with that thread which is not getting into the... I have struggled. I, have no, I know my mother used to do the stitching and the swing. And she would struggle with that needle because that, that part of the swing machine, there's no light. For a long time, there was no light there. Now new machines have. At that time, there was no light. And it was covered. If there's a light of the room, it will be covered by the machine's body. So it was dark. And you had to put the thread inside that, that needle's eye. And there was no threader used at that time. When I went abroad way back many times in the early 80s, I found it in a shop and I thought that was very easy. Why didn't we sell it in every shop in our country? Why don't people use this simple solution? It doesn't cost much. Hardly one rupee or two rupees. And yet we struggle. So there is a, this is, and Rahul says that I have heard it for the first time. Why this asymmetry? Why this asymmetry? When we know that a solution exists. So when, when somebody, Sarujit mentioned, Sarujit mentioned that ignorance, yes, I agree with you. Why is this ignorance so pervasive? Why are we not seeking answer to these questions that bother our life, that make us inefficient? Please reflect on that. Please reflect on these questions. Next time, next class. When is the next class? When is the next class? Uh, let me see. 23rd. 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 Yes, 23rd. So 23rd, I'm just uh, putting, just for uh, one minute I'll take and then we'll close. I just want to put the next class uh, questions before you so that you will come prepared. And I would like more participation. I would like more of you to speak and bring examples. So you will bring, you will reflect on the sources of inertia. And I, you are scholars, so you should give me a little more reasoned proposition. Maybe you can make a diagram or a flow chart and show how this inertia persists. Apply your mind, think of it carefully. Why do we live with the problems so long? Why do problems of a woman take long to this? Why do we kill our ideas? Many times you get a good idea and you say, well, no, it's not simple. Are Each one of you has been heard. So what are the ways in which we can overcome this inertia we will look at? But I would like you to bring some examples and if possible, some explanation why inertia persists and how we can overcome. All right. Any other suggestions? If you had, please send a mail to us or to Ashini, to Anamika, to me, and we'll be very happy to make some in uh, mid course correction. Thank you so much. See you later. Thank you, sir. All the best. Thank you, sir, Bye. for such a great Thank and you, amazing sir. innovative lecture. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 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 Good night. Good night.